everybody. Today we're going to talk about modeling linear equations. When we model data, we're trying to find a function that matches the data being studied. In our case, we're looking for a line that fits the data. Usually, the line will not perfectly match our points. The line found for modeling data is often called the line of best fit or trend line. Trend lines are often found by plotting the data points and then using mathematical software to find the linear equation that best matches the set of points. I'm going to be using Desmos to find our line of best fit. Correlation coefficients are used to measure how strong a relationship is between two variables, in our case usually x and y. The formula returns a value between negative 1 and 1, where positive 1 indicates a strong positive relationship, negative 1 indicates a strong negative relationship. A result of 0 indicates no relationship at all. I have good news, we don't have to do the calculation, it's built into Desmos. I want to show you a few examples of correlation coefficients. So in the first example, I have a positive correlation. There are a lot of dots, but you can see the line is increasing from left to right. And because the line isn't too strong, meaning the points don't really come too close to the line, we have a value of 0.4. In the second case, there's no correlation. Our r is equal to 0. None of the points line up well. They're scattered all over the place. And then our last example, we have a negative correlation. Again, not a great correlation. We have r equals negative 0.4, but we can see a little bit of a grouping and a downward shift from left to right. Here are some more examples of correlation coefficients to give you an idea of what we're going to be looking at. So if you look across the first row, you can see really tight relationships of 1 and 0.8. Then more scattered of 0.4, 0, where it's just a cluster. Negative 0.4 becomes a little more clear negative 0.8, and then lastly, negative 1. If you follow along with the second line, you'll see more examples of what it would look like if I had a correlation of 1, 0, and negative 1. And then the bottom row shows things that just don't correlate at all. So look at these four graphs. I label them A, B, C, and D. And I want you to look at them, pause me if you have to, and decide which of them have a positive correlation which of them have a negative correlation, and then which of the graphs have a strong correlation. So let's start with A. When I look from left to right, the points are going up, so I would call this a positive correlation. So I'm going to write a plus sign to say positive. B, the points are going down, so I would call that a negative correlation. C, the values continue to go down, so it's also negative. And in the D, I can see left to right, they're going up, so that would be a positive correlation. So maybe you're thinking slope. That's not entirely wrong here. We're looking at how do they fit together. What do you think about strong correlation? Which of the points look like they're closer together, or that they follow some kind of trend, and others are scattered more apart? So when I look at it, I can see A, I could put a line in there. So this is a strong correlation. Let's write strong. B looks a little bit more scattered. C, I can also see a line, so let's also say that's pretty strong. And then D, again, a little more scattered. As we go to Desmos and put things in, I'll show you how to put the correlation coefficient in Desmos as well. A regression was done to determine whether there's a relationship between hours of running per week X and the number of minutes it takes to run a mile Y. The results of the regression are given below, Use this to predict the time it takes a person who runs five hours a week to run a mile. Give your answer as a whole number. So our line is y equals ax plus b, and a is negative 0.625. The a works as the slope. We have y equals negative 0.625 times x, and then the b was 12. We were given that x is equal to 5. We're going to write y equals negative 0.625 times 5, plus 12. This says y is 8.875, but the direction says give your answer as a whole number, so let's go ahead and round that up to 9. So what does this mean? So what does this mean? Well, it means according to this model, a person that runs 5 hours a week will be running a 9-minute mile. So let's take some data and find our own trend lines. The market value of plant-based meat worldwide in billions of dollars is in the graph. We're going to use Desmos to forecast the demand in 2021 and 2022. So in 2018, the demand was $10.1 billion. 
in 2019 is $11.59 billion, and in 2020 it was $13.31 billion. Anytime we want to find a trend line or a line of best fit, we're going to start by turning these into points. So the points I'm going to put in are 0, 10.1, 1, 11.59, and 2, 13.31. What I did here is I used the x value as the number of years after 2018. You're going to find that I do this often just to make it easier to interpret our graph and to have a smaller coordinate system to look at. So to find the trend line, I go to Desmos and I hit the plus sign that says I want to add a table. We're going to put in the x values of 0, 1, and 2. And then we'll put in the corresponding y values of 10.1, 11.59, 13.31. Now when you're looking at the graph, maybe you see them, maybe you don't. There's a point way up here, maybe you can see it. But if I hit this little plus sign, it's going to zoom in and show all three points. To graph the line, I'm going to type Y1. It automatically does the subscript. I don't have to do anything with it. I'm going to open the keyboard, go to the alphabet, and along the bottom line, there's the squiggle for approximation, and I want to click that. I'm going to type AX1. Notice again, I didn't have to hit any other keys. It does the subscript. And then I say plus B. What I'm telling Desmos is that I want it to make a line, and that's what the A does in the B. A becomes the slope, B becomes the y-intercept. So what did it tell me? It says A is 1.605 and B is 10.0617. You can see the correlation coefficient. It's 0.9991 that says this is a very good fit. It's close to one and that's what we want. To do the predictions of what will happen in 2021 and 2022, I'm going to type in f of x is equal to ax plus b. Now the a and the b Desmos knows what it is, it just put them in in the last one. So down in the next line, I'm going to type f of 3 and f of 4. What is f of 3 and f of 4? Well, we said x was the number of years after 2018. So three years later, which would be 2021, it's predicting that the demand will be $14.88 billion. And then four years, which is 2022, says the demand will be $16.48 billion a year. Use the line to find when the demand will be $24 billion a year. Let's write down what we had. We have A is equal to 1.605, and our B was equal to 10.0617. So we want to know when will 24 be equal to 1.605x plus 10.0617. To do this, we need to first subtract the 10.0617 from 24, which gives 13.9383 is 1.05x, and then divide by 1.605, which gives us x is equal to 8.68. Remember this is years after 2018. So if I wanted to, I could round this up to 9. I can add it to 2018, which is where our data started, and then this would say this would be in the year 2027. We could also go back to Desmos and we could type in y equals 24. Let's zoom in so we can find 24. And what we're looking for here is the point of intersection. So when I click, it gives me the point and it says 8.684, just like we got from using the algebra. I don't care which way you do it. You can use the algebra if that makes you happy. You can use the technology if that works better for you. You just want to be able to manipulate the two data, put it together, and predict your answers. Well, let's try another set of data. Here I have the number of deaths from drug overdoses starting in the year 2015 and going up to the year 2020. Here I'll make x the number of years after 2015. When I'm writing these numbers in, I won't put comma placeholders for the thousands because that'll just be confusing when we get to Desmos. I can only have one comma and a point. So I'm going to put in 0, 47, 523, then 1 with 52, 902, 2 with 65, 571, 3 with 70, 122, 4 with 67, 697, and then 5 with 72, 106. Again, I start by adding a table. 
and I'm gonna put in my years. I go zero through five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm putting in the number of deaths. So 47, 523, 52, 902, 65571, 70122, four with six, seven, 697, and then five with 72106. We want to hit the magnifying glass, which will zoom over and show us the points. And then we're going to tell it to do a line of best fit. So we'll type Y1. And notice it says we have six elements, so immediately it knows that it's going to the table. Then we go to the bottom to grab the approximately A, X1, plus B. Okay. This time, you can see A is 4910.03. And B is 5,378.4. The R is not as close to 1 as it was last time, and you can see the points are a little bit off the line. So we have an R of 0.9157. It's still a good correlation, it's just not as strong as the last one. Let's talk a little bit about this A. A serves as the slope of our line of best fit. What does it say? It says here's how the number of deaths are increasing from year to year. So sadly, it says the number of overdoses is increasing by a rate of 4,910 each year. So let's look at one more, and I thought it'd be good to look at something that's business related. So this has to do with the number of operating craft breweries. So this starts in 2011, and it goes up to 2020. In the chart, though, I only picked every other year. So I started with X being the year after 2011, and I selected 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So this corresponds to 2011, 2013, 2015, 2017, and 2019. I didn't use all the data this time. And then the Y is the number of operating craft breweries during that year. I will add my table, put in the years 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And then I'm going to go back to the top and put the number of breweries. So 1977, 2863, 4628, 6661, and then 8391. I hit the zoom. Look how nicely these line up, so I'm expecting a really good correlation coefficient this time. We're going to type Y1 is approximately AX1 plus B. So what do I see? We see 831.3 is our A, we see B is 1578.8, and then our correlation coefficient is 0.9926, so really good correlation here. The 831.3 as our slope says the number of breweries is increasing by 831 a year. This is an approximate, it's not exact, but it gives us a good idea that this is still a very largely growing industry.